Well, good morning. It is always great to be with you in the Great Hall. And what a setup to come with you after we've just celebrated communion together. Such a special time led by Han. I said this in the first service, but I'll say it again, that I am so grateful to serve with my brother Han. He is not just a gifted worship leader, but a gifted pastoral leader for all of us here, myself included. And so I'm just grateful that God brought him here to Park Cities. And me too. And so this morning, if it is your first time here, you picked a really great time to come because we're kicking off a brand new sermon series that will carry us to Advent. Yes, Christmas is coming, but before then, we're gonna be spending the next three weeks talking about the fact that we are better together. That's true of us in the larger kingdom of God and true of us here locally as we dig into who we are as a local faith family at PCBC. So here at PCBC, I get to kick us off with the fact that we are all about Jesus and sharing the gospel. I'd argue we're not all about Jesus unless we share the gospel. So that's today. Next week, our pastor Jeff will be addressing us as a full faith family as he offers us vision for the way forward. And then we'll wrap up our sermon series talking about living in unity as we truly are better together. I do want to say, if we haven't yet met, I do want to introduce myself to you. I'm Megan Hendrickson, and I am the Minister to Women and Discipleship Resource Director here. So when this service ends, just come right up here to the front. I would love to meet you. And I'm honored to be able to share who we are. That is all about Jesus. PCBC exists to lead all generations to love Jesus. We gather and send out to live and love like Jesus. So as we talk about this this morning, we're gonna be in 2 Corinthians. There's this incredible passage that talks about this. We'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 21. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version if you would like to join me. Paul writes, For the love of Christ controls us, because we've concluded this, That one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He or she is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God is making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's good news. As we talk about the fact that we are better together, do you know in this passage, this language of we and us, this is a passage rooted in the community in Christ. And we're gonna see together as we talk about who we are as a local faith family, that there are three primary collective identity statements for us in Christ right here. That in Christ Jesus, we are ministers, we are storytellers, and we are ambassadors for Christ. So let's jump in. Verse 14, Paul writes, for the love of Christ controls us. That word controls in Greek is syneko. What it means is held together and compelled. How beautiful is that? That not only am I personally and individually held together and compelled by the love of Jesus, but we are collectively as his body held together and compelled by the love of Jesus. The church is one of the greatest witnesses to God on earth. 
Because as I look out and see you of all ages, men, women, boys, girls, different ethnicities, hopefully different socioeconomic statuses and backgrounds and relationship statuses, if we step outside the walls of this church, why on earth would we choose to hang out together collectively as one unless we were in the same family? And yet that's the case. We are the family of God. The church is to be the truest family we're ever a part of as we give witness to the one who holds us together and compels us by his love. His name is Jesus. Let's keep going. For the love of Christ controls us because we've concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. What this is saying is that Jesus came and he died for us. You realize all of us are destined for death. We were destined to forever apart from God, but God would not settle for that. He sent his very own son to live the life we couldn't, die the death we should have, and be raised to life so that we could too live with him forever. He's died for all so that all who live, that is all of us who place our trust in Jesus, that we believe, God, you're the Lord and Savior of the world and I exist to love you, then now we're truly living. Jesus said in John 14, six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That means that apart from Christ, we're not truly living. And he's given us a new way of life, it's his way. You see, the world says life is all about us, and it feeds that in us, doesn't it? But Jesus says something different. Jesus says right here that we don't exist to live for ourselves. We exist to live for him because we've been brought to this new life in him. And can I tell you, it's truly living when we live our lives for him. We're discontent until we do. Let's keep going. Verse 16, from now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You know, we just finished a sermon series through Philippians called All Things New. So we should be familiar with this, that in Christ Jesus, he is truly making all things new, you and I included. And so what happens is as we come to know Jesus for who he truly is, then he enables us to see others for who they truly are. That is created in the image of God, created to love and worship God in response to his great love for us. He's making all things new. The old is gone. What was original to you, it's long past gone. We're over it. The new has come and that is something worth beholding. That God has made us new in Christ Jesus. We're to live a new way of life. Behold, the new has come. Let's keep going. Verse 18, all this is from God. All of this, everything we've talked about thus far and everything period is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. It's a gift. That's the very same ministry that Jesus spent his life serving in. The very same work that he was about, he's now entrusted to us because we are ministers of reconciliation. Every single one of us in Christ, regardless of your job title. I know I introduced myself as a minister to women, but no, I'm a minister of reconciliation and in Christ Jesus, so are you. As his sons and his daughters, we've inherited the family business. We're to be about our father's work. The very same ministry that Jesus did, I can't express enough how incredible it is. He's entrusted that to us. Y'all, I don't feel equipped for that, but his word tells me that he's equipped us with everything we need to live a godly life in Christ Jesus. Huge. This is who we are. Ministers of reconciliation. Ministry means service. Minister means servant. That means we exist to serve to the end that others will be reconciled to God and one another. It's what Jesus was about. It's what we are to be about too. Let's keep going. Verse 19, that is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. 
So God's not only given us the ministry of reconciliation, he's given us the message. That word message in Greek is logos. It means word and narrative. So we are storytellers. We're not only ministers, we're storytellers of the gospel, the good news of Jesus. But logos means narrative, it also means word. I said, if you're familiar with John's gospel, you know he begins it by saying, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God and the word was with God. The word was with God in the beginning. What he's saying is the word is Jesus Christ, the son of God, the one that we worship. So God's given us the ministry and he's given us the message. He's given us the Messiah. As we share the good news of Jesus, we're not just sharing about Jesus. We are sharing Christ Jesus himself. Do you believe that? We're storytellers. I'm gonna sit here with us for a minute because something that stands out to me in these identity statements is ministers, storytellers, and ambassadors for Christ is that to be a minister or an ambassador for Christ requires a relationship with Jesus. But to be a storyteller, now that's been true of us from the beginning. I believe that part of us being created in the image of God is that we are storytellers because God is. Look at the word he's given us. This thing's full of stories. Look at your life. It's filled with stories. Libraries are packed with stories. There's a reason we binge watch our favorite TV shows. We love a good story. Tell me the last sermon you heard that didn't include a story. Even Instagram has story features on it. We love story because God does. We exist to live in this space of story. And he's given us the best story. As I talk about this, I wanna say, if you're a woman who's 18 or older and you haven't yet joined us for Woven, I hope that you'll come right in this room, Wednesday, um, not September, sorry, December 1st. (laughs) Wednesday, December 1st, 6.30, right in this room. This is what we do at Woven. Every month we'll focus on one woman's story in the Bible. And after we're done learning her story together, we talk around tables and we always talk through the same question. It's this, how to see your story in this woman's story. Because here's the thing, what we're learning is as we learn her story, we're better understanding God's story and how we can live into God's story better together. Because every story in the Bible points to Jesus. Every story in the Bible is connected to Jesus. And I believe that every story in our lives is too. Because I'm fully convinced we're created in the image of God to know him and worship him. And Jesus has been pursuing us always and he always will be. Therefore, every one of our life stories every day of our lives connects to Jesus, but we forget that. This is why we come together. Because the truth of the matter is, I can be in a season that's incredibly dark. We sang it just now, he'll light it up. How? When we come together. Because I can feel alone, isolated, abandoned, forgotten, filled with sorrow and suffering. But as I come together with the family of God, there's a child of God who comes alongside me and he or she will say, listen, I know that right now it seems like God's forgotten you. I know right now it's really hard to find hope, but I can promise you that God is with you. I can promise you that he is working with you and in you and through you for your good and for his glory. I can promise you because I've been there. He carried me through and because of that, I know he'll do it for you. This is why we come together because we are so quick to forget who God is. We share stories in relationship with others and how beautiful it is that God has made us storytellers already. That means that to do the ministry he's entrusted to us, We do it through stories. This is the way we connect to others. Stories help us better understand what's true, but they also help us better understand one another. So you can connect with every person you spend time with. Do you know when you spend time with others, we're sharing stories, aren't we? Hello, this is our ministry. This is our message. So in our stories, we can share the good news of Jesus. Gospel means good news. Yes, the gospel is the power of salvation for all who believe. And did you know it's a story? It's a story. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will never perish, but live forever with him. But he's also given us stories each and every day. Share those too. Not just stories of Christ's rescue, but of his relationship. Because as I live my life and I get to know other people, I'm discovering that 
Many of us are not so aware of our need of rescue in Christ Jesus, though we need him. But I would say most, if not all of us, are aware of our need of relationship. We're desperate for it. And that's what Jesus offers us, a greater relationship than we could find anywhere in anyone else. Maybe you need to hear that this morning. I'm a living testimony to the fact that Jesus is all our, song, our soul longs for and so much more than we could ever desire. He's to be our most treasured and enjoyed relationship, testify of his rescue, share about his relationship that he desires with others just as he does with you. We are storytellers. Verse 20, therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Ambassadors are people who are authorized and sent to represent one nation in another nation. As resident representatives, that's us. We in Christ Jesus are citizens of heaven. We are authorized and sent by God himself to be resident representatives of Christ Jesus our Lord here on earth. You see, Jesus is no longer just passing by, gathering crowds, preaching about the kingdom of God. We are. We are, his Holy Spirit lives in us. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and lives in me who are in Christ regardless of your age. That means the moment you're saved, when I was seven years old, I was sent as a minister, as a storyteller, and as an ambassador. He says it right here. God's making his appeal through us. The New Living Translation says that we speak for Christ when we plead, be reconciled to God. I'm practicing what I'm preaching with you this morning. This means anytime we're sharing with others about Jesus, what happens is that's not just us sharing. That is the spirit of the living God in us sharing, advocating, pleading, come back to God, be reconciled to God. We were created to be in this space. How phenomenal is that? Spirit of the living God not only lives in you, but he speaks through you. And it changes the way we see every single encounter. I look at it this way. I believe that I'm living my life with this bag full of invitations. But they don't have my name on it. They have other people's names on them. That means that those invitations are not mine to keep. They're mine to give away. And they're not just to some fun birthday party. Therefore, the greatest party we'll ever know that never ends, that is eternal life with Christ Jesus our Lord that starts now. So I'm living my life with this bag full of invitations and every person that I encounter, I'm to give them that handwritten invitation from God to live with them forever. What they do with the invitation is not up to me. Whether they open it, whether they RSVP, not up to me. It's my job to deliver those invitations and it's not only my job, it's my joy. Y'all, it means so much for people to hear that they are thought of and wanted personally by God. That we can walk into scenarios with that confident hope each and every day with the people we meet. That I know that God loves you because I do. I know that God sees you because I do that he knows that I love him and he's gonna come up in conversation. So when he had us meet, it's evidence of his love for you. We can live with that confident hope and expectation in relationships with others. The only reason we care about people is because God does. This month, I've had a number of friends who have landed in their new homes overseas in different countries as they're serving the Lord there. And I love being able to get their updates as they're so excited about who they're meeting in coffee shops and grocery stores and on their bus route as they're making themselves at home and learning their new communities as they're fully convinced that God has sent them to these people at this time in this place to know him. But I'm here to tell you that the same is true of you and I, regardless of your zip code, wherever you are, God has planted you there as his resident representative, as his ambassador, as a storyteller, as his minister. You are sent just as much as my friends are sent. Maybe it's not your job title. So be it. It's who you are in Jesus. What I am calling us to this morning is to walk in the fullness and the freedom of the presence of the Lord, to walk in the fullness of who he's already made us to be in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We are his sons and his daughters, and we exist to share him with everybody that that we meet because here's the truth 
The only reason that you know him or I know him today is because somebody once took the time to tell us about him. Is that not true? It is. Somebody once took the time to tell us about him. And the only reason you and I are still breathing today and not already home with Jesus in heaven is because there are people he's placed in our lives who we need to take the time to tell them about him. And don't just tell them about him, but share him. We see the first disciples, when they encounter Jesus, they see him for who he is. They run to their friends and family and they say what? They say, come and see. Come and see. The way that we do that is we have seen the glory of God. If you haven't yet, I pray today's the day of your salvation and you can see him for true, who he truly is. Come and see. But if you know him, then the way that we say come and see today is we open up our lives to others. We open up about the way he's rescued us. We open up about his ongoing relationship with us. That when everybody leaves us, Jesus comes near. There's nobody else like that. This world's desperate to hear that hope, that story. It's a true story and it'll change your life. And you're here on earth to share it. The older I get, the more prone I am to forget that that is my purpose, to love God and to share him with others. I fall for the world's lies day in and day out that my life is about anything and everything but Jesus, but it's not. Jesus said it's about him. And when it's about him, it's gonna be about others. We can be unashamed of the gospel. It's the power of salvation for all who believe. What is the gospel? It's right here for us, verse 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. In him, that's Jesus. Jesus never sinned. He became sin for us so that we might become in him the righteousness of God. It's no greater love than that. I wanna share with you a story that continues to haunt me in a good way. I pray it always does. When I was in college, I was fixing to move to Johannesburg, South Africa for a semester to serve the Lord. I was being sent out by Go Now Missions. It's a Texas Baptist sending ministry for college students. I highly recommend it. So there was a small group of us going to spend our semesters overseas. And there was a girl in my group who had grown up uh, here in DFW in a suburb. But she had only gotten saved at 20 years old just the year before. When she was saved, she was sent to move to Southeast Asia to share with everyone she could the hope, the rescue, and the relationship she'd found in Jesus. She said when she was 20 years old in college, it was the first time somebody told her that Jesus loved her. She'd grown up with a really hard home life. She'd had an abortion in high school. So she thought if there was a God, there's no way he could actually love her until somebody told her. Now here's what haunts me. One of the guys who was going with us was her best friend growing up. He was headed to Africa and he had desires to be a church planner. That was the call of God on his life. He grew up as a pastor's son. They grew up best friends in school. And I asked him, not in a way that was condemning, but truly curious. I pulled him aside and I said, how is it that in all of your years of friendship, it never came up in conversation. You never told her that Jesus loved her. And he said, I figured she already knew. I assumed somebody had already told her. How often do I believe that too, y'all? And you, we cannot make that assumption today. This is not a girl who grew up on the other side of the world where the church is underground. She grew up in the DFW, in the suburbs, drinking pumpkin spice lattes. She grew up just like me. She grew up the best friend of a pastor's son who was gonna be a church planner. And it wasn't until she was 20 years old that somebody first told her that Jesus loved her and there's nothing you can ever do that will prevent him from loving you because God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. Not just you on your best day, you in those moments you're most ashamed of. God looks at that man, woman, boy and girl and he says, I love you and you're mine. I created you to be mine forever. I adore you, come, come. 
We cannot make that assumption. We exist to tell others the good news of Jesus, of his rescue and his relationship. Who do you know who needs to hear that Jesus loves them? They need to hear it from you because they're gonna hear it from Christ in you. If that weren't the case, you'd already be in heaven and I wouldn't be talking to you right now. There's work to be done and it's good work. In fact, it's where we're gonna find true life. It's who we are. It's who we're made to be and freed to be in Jesus. So I'll close with this. As we share stories, this is just one of my stories in the way I'm experiencing Christ's rescue and ongoing relationship. Last Sunday morning, I had the joy of being able to see my oldest niece, Hope, who's eight years old, get baptized. She got saved Good Friday of last year at the height of the pandemic. But it was now that she was ready to be baptized. And before my big brother baptized her, she was able to share her testimony on a video with the whole church family to see. She shared all these stories of God at work in her life. She said, I wanna be baptized to show others what Jesus has done for me in my life. Not just to show others that she belongs to Jesus, but to show others what Jesus has done for her in her life because she believes he can do it for them too. She gets it. She started sharing this story of when she was in pre-K, just four years old, she didn't even have a personal relationship with Jesus yet. And she shared how she had this friend of hers in her pre-K class who her mom was dying of cancer, but Hope didn't know that and neither did her friend. Their teachers did, but the kids didn't. And so she's talking with her friend one day and she asks her friend, she says, do you know what happens when people die? And her teachers were like, oh no, what's Hope doing? And her friend says, no, what? And Hope said, they go to heaven. Now I'm gonna add in there, they go to heaven if you place your hope and trust in Jesus, okay? But she shares that with her friend and Hope said that it gave her friend hope. She's appropriately named. It gave her friend hope and her mom hope as she dealt with cancer. Her mom ended up dying. She's with Jesus today. Her funeral, I'd never met her mom, but her funeral I watched just online. You'd think, okay, a wedding, you share that day with your spouse, so it's really about two people, but if there's ever a day or a time that's supposed to be all about you, I would think it's my funeral. But at her funeral, I heard the name of Jesus so much more than her name. But I wanna say how kind of God, Hope said, that's one way Jesus was working in me and through me when I didn't even know it. She didn't even really know him. How kind of God that he would see this little four-year-old girl who was about to lose her mom to cancer and he would send this other four-year-old girl to share with her hope, to carry her through. This is the God we worship. I say that to you to say I'm challenged by my niece who says she's struggling with anxiety and math and She's really relying on God and there's something in her that makes her wanna pray, that's the Holy Spirit. When she's in recess, she has worship songs playing in her head, that's the Holy Spirit. She's choosing to believe God. She's choosing to share him with others. She sold out for Jesus at just eight years old and I've spent this week re-watching her testimony, so challenged by her that she gets it. I once did. How have I so quickly forgotten? That seven-year-old girl in me that was so enamored with the God of all creation that loved me so much he sent his son to die for me. He's still the same. We're the ones who are changing, but our purpose endures forever. Regardless of if you're white-haired, bald or not, our purpose endures forever. We never retire from our calling. We are ministers, storytellers, and ambassadors for Christ Jesus. We exist to show the world that we've been rescued in relationship with Jesus. So I pray as you leave today and head into the week, you walk in the fullness of that. That is who you are in Christ Jesus. Nothing more and nothing less than sent by God to share the good news of Jesus. Be empowered by him today. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you so much for who you are. You are Father, Son, and Spirit. 
There's nobody like you. There never has been. There never will be. I don't understand your love that's so great for us that we brought nothing to the table. We were your enemies and you called us friends. Even more, you called us sons and daughters. You sent your own spirit to make a home within us, to rule and to reign and to reside within us so that we might go out into this world, out into the darkness and bring light, bring life, bring hope. God, will you use us to do it? Will you give us a desire to come together to do that for one another, not just those who are not yet in the family of God, but those of us who are in it because God, we are so quickly swayed. We are so quick to forget why we're here and what you've done for us. We forget who you are and in so doing, we lose sight of who we were made to be in you and with you forever. God, we are better together. We are all about you. Therefore, we share the gospel. We share the good news of you. Make us unashamed. It's the power of salvation for all who believe. And I pray if there's anyone in this room who has not yet said yes to your gift of life and love, don't let them leave here today without saying yes to you, without becoming a son and a daughter, a minister, storyteller, and ambassador. Because when you rescue us, you give us a relationship and you send us out to invite others into that very same relationship. All for your glory and our good. Amen.